There's no question that both Christianity and Islam have been twisted by people with not such good agendas. God is not the only person that's been guiding your religion over the past thousand years. you got to realize there's human beings that have had an influence in the policies and doctrines that are taught in your religion. you got to realize it's not just the will of God that's been guiding your religion. It's been man. And not all of these men have been people of high integrity. Well, I'm not going to mince words. There is a conspiracy by certain people who have twisted religion into a form of mind control and manipulation. The Islam has got some questionable things about it, too. I was going to concentrate more today on the concept of turning the other cheek, because this is something I've been passionate about. Now, some of these passages have been deliberately twisted, put out of context. It can be very dangerous to allow yourself to be a victim. And if you take that passage literally out of context, exactly the way it's written, uh, you can allow yourself to be a victim. You will know that Christ defended himself verbally, but usually, you know, he didn't let himself get out of rage. Somebody victimizes you, and inevitably that's going to happen, even by your own family and loved ones, okay? When somebody victimizes you, intentionally or unintentionally, you don't want to respond with uncontrolled rage. Now, that is hard for some people to do. And it's very difficult dealing with people like that. Some people like that can't even live in society, they end up living in institutions, either mental institutions or in prison, because they can't deal with their fellow human beings. In some of these people, it's almost impossible. Now, some people have that condition to some degree, and it's difficult. No matter what is done to you, responding with uncontrolled rage is only going to make the situation worse. <laughs> I could give you a million examples, but I'm sure you can think of some. I'm sure you've been part of situations like this. Either you yourself or some, you've known somebody who's behaved like this, with uncontrolled rage. While you want to try to not allow your emotions, you want to use your brain to think about how, what to, how to deal with the situation, not your emotions. So, but you do need to do something about it. You can't allow yourself to be a victim. The disciples in Jesus, they didn't allow them. They didn't just sit back and say, go ahead, victimize me, come on. I mean, like some kind of a masochist who likes pain. I mean, they didn't go out and deliberately try to be victims. Okay? It happened. But well, that doesn't mean that you go out and invite people to victimize you for no reason. And you don't allow yourself to be victimized over and over. Uh, you can get into a bully-victim relationship. I mean, if you want to invite people to victimize you, uh, there's a million and one people out there that would be more than happy to do. The sadists and bullies are a dime a dozen in this world. Uh, they're everywhere. And you'll find them all over. There are many people who would be more than willing to physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, and sexually, and financially abuse you up one side and down the other. And nobody gains by allowing yourself to be a victim, including the bully or psycho who's doing it to you. Because if you allow them to victimize you, you are teaching them that it's okay to victimize other people. People, and they're not just going to victimize you, they're going to victimize other people. So nobody gains from it. I made that mistake. I allowed myself to be a victim. And I allowed my ex-wife to victimize me. Normally, I just allow myself to be a victim over and over again. You have to do something to defend yourself. And there's a million and one ways you can. If a person really wants to continue to hurt you, whether it's physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever, the first step is to, without rage and anger, calmly tell a person, look, you can't talk to me like this. Of course, some people will fly into a rage if you do that to them, because they want to keep on hurting you and get to your problem. If there's no way you can verbally deal with the situation, then you have to take some other course. But, you know, we need to do something to defend ourselves. To so just sit here and allow ourselves to be victims is part of the problem. And I think that this is one of the manipulations of Christianity. They probably took a passage, maybe Jesus said something about don't fight back, and they twisted it in a way to try to make Christians victim, allow themselves to be victims. You can't allow yourselves to be victims. And, you know, also there's things in the, in the Christian religion, you know, obey authority. Well, to a degree. If authority is doing what it's supposed to, yes. But if authority is not doing what it's supposed to, if authority is victimizing people, stealing money, trying to destroy the whole world, then you shouldn't. I mean, you shouldn't pay taxes if they're using that tax money to drop white phosphorus on children on Iraq and Afghanistan and other places. But what you can do is try to live off the grid. Um, I encourage people to do that. That's one way you can defend yourself. Of course, if everybody starts living off the grid, that's going to be a problem. They're going to come after you, too. That's what, that, I believe, is the main reason they had the Tate, Charles Benz and the Tate murders. They orchestrated that because there's too many people in the counterculture, the hippie movement, were starting to live off the grid. And they were, that was going to be a major concern. Because if you don't live off the grid, if we trade it, we grow our own food, we trade amongst ourselves, they can't get any revenue out of that. And that's where they get all their money from, and then they use that money for all these evil things. So one of the best ways to fight back is to try to live off the grid. Let the honest do that to a good degree. And that's one way to fight back and defend yourself. There's others we need to be creative. I, I've said before, I think we should start creating secret societies of our own. Um, it's the only way. Because if you try to create a militia or something outwardly, they're, they're just going to infiltrate it. So I mean, we're going to have to create our own secret societies, and they're going to have to be very, very careful to make sure they don't get infiltrated. And probably multi-level that way, if the outer circle gets infiltrated, which it will probably, um, the inner circles will survive, and you can create multiple outer circles that way. When, when, when they get infiltrated, you can create new ones. That's what they do, and it works for them. I'm going to go on all, all day long about this. This is just giving you some ideas what can be done. The self-defense is, is important. Okay, You can't just allow yourself to be a victim. You don't want to over-lash out to people, you know, overreact to small things, but you got to do something to defend yourself, take some other kind of action, but you can't allow yourself to be a victim. There's no question that both Christianity and Islam have been twisted by people with not such good agendas, okay? So you got to realize that God is not the only person that's been guiding your religion over the past 2,000 years. You know, you got to realize there's human beings that have had an influence in the policies and doctrines that are taught in your religion, okay? So you got to realize it's not just the will of God that's been guiding your religion, it's been the will of man. And not all of these men have been people of 
high integrity, okay? Well, I'm not going to mince words. There is a conspiracy by certain people.